technology developed by a Marlborough oyster company is being used by over 70 oyster farmers in 12 countries around the world. Flip Farm's success aligns with MPI's Fit for a Better World roadmap of productivity growth and has been recognised internationally with Seafood Industry Awards for innovation. I grew up on sheep farms and then when I left school I went into the dairy industry for about seven years. I left the dairy industry in the early 90s and discovered aquaculture, which was like a perfect mix of farming and the sea, which I really enjoyed as well. And so I worked for a, a large aquaculture company for about 20 years, growing green shell mussels. And then an opportunity came up to leave that company and start our own business growing oysters. So my wife and I started uh, Marlborough Oysters in 2011. And we had uh, very fast growth. We were supplying largely juvenile oysters to the industry for on-grow, a little bit like store lambs where you um, sell them for finishing. And then uh, we had a number of staff, uh, around about 12 staff, and the system we were using was very labour intensive. And it also uh, we had a lot of problems with storms and, and damage and loss of equipment. So after a particularly hard year where we'd had some very nasty storms and uh, we had quite high staff turnover, I decided we just need to come up with a, a new way of growing oysters. So the solution we came up with was, was these baskets we call Flip Farm. And the concept is that we use a rigid basket and we mount a float on the top. And then we have this tube here, which we call an axle. And this is the key to the system because it allows the basket to rotate individually on the line. So we can open the basket, empty the oysters out, refill it. And importantly, we can flip the basket over to dry it out so it holds the oysters in the basket out of the water for our drying process. Even though the system was invented by Marlborough Oysters for our own use, um, we very quickly realised that a lot of other farmers were keen to use it as well. So this is actually now our bigger company. Marlborough Oysters is still quite a considerable size oyster farming company. Uh, we farm about 37 hectares of water uh, here in the Marlborough Sounds and we produce between 3 and 4 million oysters a year. The key things to look for when you're looking for oyster quality, first of all, if it's, if it's whole shell, you want to have them full of water, not, not lost their water. And you can sort of hear that um, there's, a, there's a, a difference in tone when they've, when they've lost their water. Um, a nice shape is, is good and, and a deep cup that holds more uh, meat. And then um, when you actually look inside the oyster, So this white part of the oyster here is what we call glycogen. It makes it, uh, it's the sweet part that we like to eat. And so with these oysters, they retain this glycogen all year round. Uh, with a wild oyster, they tend to spawn out. So they'll end up with um, uh, not, not as fat, not as good to eat uh, after Christmas. Our oysters come as what we call spat, which is uh, baby oysters. Um, these are, are produced in a nursery in uh, Nelson. And these are, would be a, a few months old. They go through several stages and as they grow, we spread them out and then we do that through the grading process. Uh, and then they end up around about this size, which is about 80 millimetres long. Today, the guys are emptying out our flip farm baskets. And what we're doing here is thinning the product out a little bit. So it's grown to full size, it's, it's ready to export, but they just need finishing off a little bit. So they need hardening off and just a little bit extra condition. So some of these oysters here, you'll see, these are the ones that have just been emptied out of the baskets and they still have quite a bit of the soft frill. And this is not so good when we're exporting because this will break off during the journey. So we actually want them quite hard like this. So this frill's been knocked off. And this happens by putting them out at a lower density and in a rougher site. So the, the wave action actually rumbles them and smooths them out. Good size, good shape too. In this process, they're coming up a, a ramp and then they're getting up to a nice working height. The guys are opening the doors and then the basket rotates and dumps the oysters out. And then the oysters are brought up on an elevator and then into bins ready to relocate. Once the baskets have come up and been emptied, then they, they go off the back of the what we call a shuttle, which is this little platform that, that the machinery is on. And then they rotate over due to gravity and they sit on the floats and the floats um, support the basket out of the water and that allows them to dry out overnight and it kills off the biofouling. Um, biofouling is one of our biggest issues um, in the marine environment. When you put anything into the environment, everything wants to grow on it. 
and so by drying the baskets out it's a really efficient and cheap method of controlling that biofouling. Generally the baskets stay out for about 24 hours and that's enough to kill off uh, most of the biofouling and then they're ready to reuse. Oysters are naturally an intertidal species so they like to come out of the water and does them a lot of good things. So other than the biofouling control it helps improve their, their shell strength and it also helps um, improve what we call the abductor muscle, which is the muscle that holds the two shells together, and that gives us better shelf life. We've taken the oysters out of the baskets, which were growing at quite high density, around about eight or nine dozen per basket, and now we want to thin them out so we can get that final touch of quality before they're ready to go to market. So here the bins of oysters are tipped out into the baskets, we tip them through a three-way funnel that splits them into three different baskets at once. And so they'll go back out at around about four or five dozen. It gives them a bit more space to move in the basket and that shapes them up and also allows them to get extra meat condition. We flip our baskets out every week in the summer and we've got 48,000 baskets here now. So we can do the whole operation in one day whereas previously with our old system that would have taken a week and, and been a lot more physical. As far as further growth for Flip Farm, we've really only just started uh, tapping into the market. There's still potential for a lot of growth around the world. There's a lot of different systems that are used and so there's no one perfect system, but uh, we're constantly developing the system to uh, modify the components, be able to use it in different environments. So we've got uh, places like Canada where they have four feet of ice in the winter so we're developing floats that can be quickly flooded to sink and then we've got places like southern US where they have hurricanes so we're uh, improving the components and making it so that they can have a hurricane protocol for their farms.